Hello everyone. So for this time, our next topic or next discussion will be about the profit maximization. So again, when we say profit maximization, this is where we prioritize, we maximize, we tend to get what would be the best or what would be the advantages that our firm or market could get or to earn more profit. So there are five characteristics under the profit maximization. And first, the first uh, characteristic is the market concentration, where it is used when smaller firms account for large percentage of the actual market or the total market. It measures the extent of domination of sales by one or more firms in a particular market. So when we say market concentration, we can use the uh, four types of market structures. The perfect competition, the oligopoly, the monopolistic competition, and the monopoly. So how can we use those four market structures? We will be using this um, diagram. So first we have the minimal profit, next is the medium profit, and the last one is the high profit. So when we say minimal profit, there are many sellers. And as we can see, many sellers belongs to the perfect competition or the pure competition. Because as we can see, in the market, there are many uh, fruit stands, vegetable stands, or fish vendors, or uh, vendors that can occupy or that can engage in the market just like our public mall. So, as we can see, that is an example of many sellers. Next is the medium profit where oligopoly and monopolistic competition belong. Why? Because they, they have few sellers. Oligopoly, just like the example here, the gasoline stations, we have the Shell, the Petron or the Petronas, the Caltex, the Flying V. Those are oligopoly or companies under the oligopoly and having monopoly competition just like Jollibee, Burger King, McDonald's, so on and so forth. Those are few sellers under the medium profit. And for the last one is the monopoly. Why monopoly? Because monopoly has only one seller or the monopoly, the market under the mon monopoly that can supply or they can only, they can be the only one to supply in the market. Either the goods or service just like having the Muelsi or the prime water so they can monopolize the market and the more uh, competitors the more market actors or the more concentrated the market is the less the profit that is why we have here in our diagram if we have many sellers or many competitors they can only attain minimal profit but if the least uh, competitor or if you would be the only one uh, running the business in that particular market or in that particular business then you would be earning high profit next is the second characteristic which is the market entry so when we say market entry, it refers to the activities associated with bringing a product or service to a targeted market. During the planning stage, a company will consider the barriers to entry. So when we say market entry, we can refer here the barriers to entry or the scales to entry on how can we engage to that specific business or market. So again, in the perfect competition or in the minimal profit, there are only or there are no barriers to entry. But when we say no barriers to entry, it doesn't mean zero barriers, zero um, standards. 
there are some but not totally the same with the uh, barriers under the medium and the high. So for example, in the perfect competition, you just have to uh, present or have your business permit and your sanitary stand or your suitable place for uh, engaging the market. But when we say medium profit or in the oligopoly, monopolistic competition, they have the some scale barriers and also it is called a contestable market because in oligopoly and monopolistic competition, they should have or the market should have um, a specific or allocated amount of money in maintaining and supplying the market. And when we say high profit, where the monopoly is under, there are legal and government barriers because this type of business, specifically in monopoly, uh, since they are the only one who runs this type of business, then they should have the highest standard, they should have the highest barriers to entry. Why? Because, for example, having this brand loyalty, economies of scale, geographical barriers, being the first mover, vertical integration, and patent. That, uh, that is why in the monopoly, it should have or it should compose of the highest barriers in engaging the market specifically for protecting its product for protecting its services and also preventing it from rival companies in copying their product so here we have the different corporations and companies just like nestle unilab the procter and gamble or the png or the right med also Number three is the product differentiation, where it is the process of distinguishing a product or service from others to make it more attractive to a particular target market. Now, why do we need to differentiate our products? Here, in the minimal profit or in the perfect competition, again, in, the, in this type of markets, the products are homogeneous. When we say homogeneous, they are uniform. So if Pedro is selling vegetables, Juan is also selling vegetables, they have, uh, they are engaging in the same market, in the same product. It would be uh, dependent on them or it would be uh, depending on them on how can they sales stock or how can they make their strategies to attract or to catch the attention of their consumers but in the medium profit there are some degree of product differentiation just like for example in the uh, Procter and Gamble products or in the Unilever products just like having cream silk sun silk Dove and Palmolive. So, for example, this type of products, they are the same shampoo. However, they have different qualities, they have different packaging, they have different um, texture. But even though they have these variations or differences, they are under the same company. So that is why they are some degree of product differentiation for, for the consumers to have different choices or alternatives to pick in the market. So next is the high profit where in the monopoly it is very or it is highly differentiated products. So for example having the having the Microsoft software. Now, 
In a Microsoft software, it is considered to be highly differentiated because there are no other companies, there are no other market who can contest or who can compete this type of product or this type of service in the uh, laptops, in the gadgets, or in the computer. That is why it is very highly differentiated. So next is number four, the market information, where unevenness in the distribution of information among the actors in the market. So why can we say or include market information as part of the profit maximization? So in the minimal profit under the perfect competition, it is also considered as perfect information because as we can see during uh, if we buy fish or anything that we need in the market or in the public mall, these vendors are having their sales stock to attract or to catch the attention of their consumers. Just like having the fish vendors, they would they would express or say the freshness of their products when did they catch the fish or how did they uh, produce or how did they catch these uh, products in their table so as we can see these products are perfect uh, we can consider it as perfect information because these products can be easily identified as fresh or not and the information provided are expressed or uh, shared by the vendors. But unlike in the limited information under the oligop oligopoly and the monopolistic competition of medium profit, just like having this shampoo, this cologne, this soap, this alcohol, these products are being packaged and since they are being packaged we cannot really identify the quality the texture if it is really good or if it is really uh, fresh or uh, it expires its manufacturing date so we cannot really say or identify the information all information about these products under the medium profit unlike in the minimal profit or pure competition where we can really or actually see the product itself now in the high profit also where the monopoly or the products of monopoly are very are very limited information why because as we can see, we cannot identify why would our uh, prices of electricity, prices of the water bills are very high. We can only identify the reason if we, if we go actually as consumers, if we go actually to their office because they can identify in their system the reasons behind the fluctuation of their electricity or fluctuation of our electricity the problems in the connection so those are being recorded in your system that is why in the monopoly it is very limited information and next is the market power so what is market power? It refers to the ability of a firm to raise and maintain price above the level that would prevail under competition. Example, having the SRP. And since SRP is mandated by the government, the market under perfect competition are obliged to follow the SRP or the suggested retail price. And the highest market power have the monopoly that is why in the monopoly they can have the market power they can raise the prices but not to the extent that they can abuse their power because again the government is 
regulating their power. 